Question number two, Materia Turei. Tēnā koe, Mr Speaker. Tēnā koutou te whare. <coughs> My question is to the Minister for Social Development and asks, Ka whakai a ia ki tā te kawinete o te kotahitanga o nga whenua o te ao mo nga teke tamaiti e tono rā ki a whakatū turu tana kawinatanga me noho tauna roa rawa atu nga pānga pai o te tamaiti e roto i te hininaro ka whakamanahia ana nga ture e pāna ki nga tamariki. Oh, the Honourable Hiki Parato. Tēnā koe, Mr. Se Tēnā koe. Speaker. Uh, ko te whakautu tuatahi ki te mema nāna i pātai mai, kāo. Uh, engari, mō te whai haere i tōna pātai, uh, te āhua nei e kōrero ana ke aia mō tētahi atu uh, kaupapa. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I accept that Article 3 of the Convention states that, quote, in all actions concerning children, whether undertaken by public or private social welfare institutions, courts of law, administrative authorities or legislative bodies, the best interest of the child shall be a primary consideration." Close quote. The member, however, appears to be referring to principle two of the Declaration of the Rights of the Child, which dates back to 1959 and was the basis of the convention adopted by the United Nations in 1989 and was signed up to by New Zealand in 1993. Minister Tolley is currently leading a delegation to Geneva to discuss New Zealand's report under the United Nations Convention. Monsieur. Point of order, Materia Turo. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question was actually quite simple, is whether she accepts the convention. She doesn't, the issue of Minister Tolley travelling wherever she is is of no relevance order. to the order. question that was on, on notice. Order. It is a very lengthy question. I'm listening very carefully to the answer. I think the Minister's uh, certainly addressing the question. Um, if the uh, member doesn't like the inclusion of the visit to Ant uh, the Honourable Anne Tolley somewhere, that's her problem. I am the sole determinant as to when the answer has gone on for too long, or if I think it's moving into areas that are unnecessary to be an answer to the question. At this stage, I'm not at that position. The Honourable Hagia Parata, she wants to continue. Mr Speaker, point of order. Point of order, the Honourable. I answered the first part of her question in Māori since she had asked it in Māori, so I gave a very definitive answer to the first part. And I've addressed and that I, matter. And I went on to elaborate in answer to the second part of her question. And, and I've accepted that, so there's no need to raise that as a point of order. I was then allowing the Minister, if she wanted to add any further, to complete her answer, but I think in view of the time that we've now had such a substantial break, we'll move immediately to the supplementary questions. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Supplementary Thank question, Mr. Speaker. Materia Turei. How does the fining of sole mothers $28 a week protect the best interests of their children? The Honourable Hikia Parata. Mr um, Speaker, benefit entitlements have long been associated with uh, child support and in those arrangements there are both expectations and sanctions. In the particular case that the member is asking about, there are sanctions where um, both parents are not contributing, but there are also exemptions against which an application can be made. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Materia Turo. Thank you, Mr Speaker. How has the Convention been considered in Government's decision to keep benefits so low that the poorest parents in New Zealand are now paying over 50% of their income in rent alone? The Honourable Hikia Parata. Mr Speaker, the relevance of Minister Tolley reporting to the United Nations at this time is to report on the significant uh, range of uh, supports that this government has put in to, for the most vulnerable, of whom the large proportion are children. That has included the $790 million increase in hardship. It's included the uh, establishment of the Ministry for Vulnerable Children, Oranga Tamariki. It has included the children's teams. Uh, it has included, for instance, in the education area, the targeting of operation grants to those young people who have spent a significant significant amount of their time in benefit-dependent families. Entry. Supplementary question, Materia Turo. How many of the 148,000 New Zealand children currently in hardship will be brought out of that hardship because of the $25 a week benefit increase? 
The Honourable Hickey Parata. Uh, Mr Speaker, on behalf of the Minister of Social Development, I don't have that detail to hand, but I can say that it is not one thing or another. It is the mix of uh, investments that the government is making that are directed at how we help all New Zealanders, including those most vulnerable. Supplementary question, Materia Toure. How many of the more than 20,000 children and parents currently homeless will be housed as a result of the $25 a week increase? The Honourable Hickey Parata. Mr Speaker, again, on behalf of the Minister of Social Development, I can't provide that detail, but in respect of the previous question that the member asked, I can tell her that over 17,000 children are affected by the uh, fathers who are not contributing to child support. Supplementary. Supplement. Supp they, don't get, they don't get it. That's right. Order. Supplementary question, Materia Turo. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Uh, isn't it a fact, Minister, that the payments that are made by those fathers in the main do not go to the sole parents, the sole mothers, who are fined, potentially fined, they do just not go to those parents if they are on a benefit? The Honourable Hikiparata. Uh, well, Mr Speaker, there are two avenues by which a father can contribute. One is by meeting their requirement under the benefit um, disp dispensation to the sole mother, and another is by contributing di directly to the mother of their child. Order, sir. It was a clear question. Order. She didn't can answer that. Can, can we just have the question sure. again, please, for the benefit of the Minister? Isn't it a fact, Minister, that the payments made by those fathers do not go to the sole parents, mothers, who are responsible for those children. The Honourable Hickey Parata. Mr Speaker, as I answered the first time, there are two ways by which support are re received by young people. One is by the father paying uh, his uh, apportioned share to the Ministry of Social Development so that it supports the benefit paid, and another is whereby the parent um, pays directly. Point of order. It was, a, it was a straight question, it was a clear question, and it hasn't been answered. I, I, I accept that it hasn't been asked to the satisfaction of the member. It's been asked twice now, and the answer hasn't been clear. I will allow the member two additional supplementary questions. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Will the Minister meet the challenge from the Children's Commissioner, Andrew Beecroft, uh, this morning and set clear targets for child poverty reduction to make sure that government meets its obligations under the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child. The Honourable Hickey Parata. On behalf of the Minister, I can say that she is already right now reporting on the commitments and the investments and the actual practical uh, uh, arrangements that this government has made in respect of young people. Um, in terms of whether or not she will choose to respond directly to the invitation that has publicly been made today, I can't preempt her decision on that. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Materia Turo. Will the government meet the challenge set out by the Children's Commissioner, Andrew Beecroft, this morning to change the age of criminal justice from 17 to 18? The Honourable Hickey Parata. Mr Speaker, on behalf of the Minister of Social Development, that was one of the recommendations included in the uh, expert panel. Uh, my understanding is that Ministers Adams and, um, the, and Minister Tolley are working on that now, and we are yet to receive their recommendation. Question.